okay uh, so uh, last year uh, in the lpc uh, we had provided uh, overview about uh, what we need to do for ecpi support for risk 5 and uh, in this session we will directly jump into the updates what we uh, have done so far so uh, my name is suril and i work for ventana microsystems and uh, uh, basically this work is done in multiple groups and i'm just uh, representing here all of them um, so here is the agenda uh, because it's plumbers uh, i'm keeping it very short so uh, first of all uh, before we jump into anything uh, what are the platform requirements or hardware requirements to support ecpi we will uh, discuss that and then um, uh, uefi or acpi forum uh, follows the process called engineering change request or ecrs so we have several ecrs which are um, uh, to be reviewed and uh, we will discuss about the status and the plan for the basic support and uh, uh, also we discovered a uh, necessity for a new uefa boot protocol to support ecpi for risk 5 so we'll discuss about that and uh, finally we will discuss about some of the uh, how do we go about upstreaming of these things and uh, there are some advanced features when i say advanced features uh, the first thing uh, we are trying to do is basic uh, discovery and boot support of acpi uh, in all these ecrs and there are some features like power management or iommu which are still in work in progress kind of thing so we'll discuss what we are trying to do in that uh, in in that uh, uh, functionality kind of thing so regarding platform requirements uh, basically it is uh, planned to be supported only on 64 bit platforms for obvious reasons and but important thing is it is planned to be supported only with advanced interpret architecture of risk 5 also known as aia uh, primarily because uh, acpi is targeted for server class uh, systems where msi uh, interrupts are necessary so aia provides the uh, imsic or uh, msi controller incoming msi controller uh, so that is mandatory to support uh, ACPI. Also, AIA provides a uh, uh, plic advanced platform level interrupt controller, which is an optional features, but uh, basically it is required to convert wired interrupts into MSI. So if the platform needs to support wired interrupts, uh, plic is necessary, but it is not mandatory to support ACPI. So uh, with that, we'll directly jump into the ECRs. Uh, so because EIA spec is uh, not at frozen, um, we kind of uh, uh, divided these ECRs into uh, two batches. Uh, the first one is uh, whatever is uh, already ratified or uh, there is no dependency on any specification being frozen. So uh, these two ECRs basically, uh, uh, first ECR is uh, adding the local interrupt controller uh, information in the uh, MADT table of ACPI, which is uh, known as uh, uh, multiple epic description table, where each interrupt controller information should be populated so that operating system can probe and uh, install the driver. And this is a per processor or per heart interrupt controller. And it also provides the ACPI processor ID to the heart ID association. And uh, so this, um, uh, basically it doesn't have any dependency on uh, AIA and, uh, and the second thing is uh, uh, like in a previous session we discussed so many extensions are there in uh, RISC-V and uh, in the ACPS specification there is no existing mechanism to pass that kind of uh, extensions ISA string etc so um, we are proposing a new table for RISC-V RHCT and uh, it provides primarily ISA string as well as uh, uh, the extension related uh, uh, information in future. Uh, for example, CBO needs to pass uh, block size, et cetera. So that also will be provided by this uh, table uh, along with the time-based uh, frequency. So uh, with uh, these two ECRs, we are able to boot Linux with uh, polling mode uh, SBI console and uh, RAM disk. So, uh, I mean, uh, for the proof of concept, uh, this is functionally uh, complete, but uh, it may not be useful um, uh, feature. I mean, useful in, in a complete way. So in the next batch, we plan to uh, submit the ECRs. Uh, I forgot to update that the previous batch is already submitted to SWG or UEFI forum for review, and uh, they are reviewing. And based on the feedback, we will um, 
we will uh, uh, modify that and uh, get it approved in the ACP forum. Atish, I think you raised the hand. Uh, is there a question? Yeah, in the RSCT proposal, uh, do you have the CBO size? That one is there or is it removed? No, currently it is removed because uh, uh, there was some uh, 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 some work pending uh, to finalize the things Aaron wanted. So that's why it's pending. Uh, it is removed in the first version of the RSCT. Uh, in the next update, uh, probably we'll add uh, um, CBO related stuff. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense because that thing is still undecided. So, yeah, yeah. So more, more precisely, the clarity required was from the profiles. Actually, uh, if profile comes up with a unique way of naming this CBO size in part of the ISA string, then why not use that rather than defining a new uh, entry in the RHCP team, right? So, uh, so, so we are still waiting for confirmation. So this can be always done as a separate ECR, right? Okay. Is UP forum okay with like bunch of small ECRs? Yeah, yeah. Um, as long as we update the revisions of the table, it, uh, they're fine. Sorry. Okay. Uh, just uh, does the hard capabilities table also provide the information we talked about in the previous talk? This uh, <laughs> key value pairs about the extended features. No, it it is planned to support only the ISA string to the kernel, right? Not right now, but one of the hopes is that that would fit really well into ACPI because it looks yeah. a lot like ACPI. That'd be a very natural place to have the spec owned, so it's not just a you know UABI thing because that's very similar to what all the other targets do. Right? They have a hardware-looking table they pass through. You can just keep. All right, right. Okay. okay. So moving on, uh, in the second batch, uh, basically uh, once AIA spec is frozen, uh, we plan to uh, uh, submit the CCR. So basically we will update this rent seat table, what we uh, submitted in the first uh, batch. Uh, with the per heart IMSIC base address and size, and also add the uh, IMSIC and APLIC information in the MDT. And also, uh, APLIC being a platform device which uh, basically is required to convert wired into uh, uh, MSI, which requires uh, MSI services from the IMSIC. So, this, this APLIC device needs to be populated in the namespace, uh, something similar to IOS APIC. And uh, we need an ECR and uh, dedicated uh, APLIC ID for this. So that is another ECR. And uh, finally, for NUMA, uh, each processor's uh, proximity ID needs to be um, uh, communicated uh, via uh, uh, a substructure in the um, system resource affinity table, SRAT. So that is also uh, we need to add one ECR for that. So these are the uh, uh, ECRs and uh, uh, basically we are uh, finding challenging with these timelines. Uh, we don't know when some of this spec is being frozen, so that's why we are splitting. But if things work out and uh, AI spec gets frozen, probably we'll combine these two uh, even before uh, AI um, ACPI approves the uh, ECRs. We'll see how it goes. Usually they will approve quite fast, but uh, let's see how it goes. Okay, so one more thing we discovered uh, last week, last year was uh, the uh, necessity for a new boot protocol. So primarily, uh, mainly because uh, uh, I think uh, this was brought up by Jessica uh, last year, last year. So uh, uh, traditionally in RISC-V, the boot heart ID is passed as the first argument to the kernel. And, but in case of UEFI platforms, uh, the calling convention of EFI doesn't allow that. So uh, we needed a way to pass this uh, uh, boot heart ID to the UEFI systems. Uh, so one, there was one uh, solution already available from Atish, uh, which was upstream, uh, basically to pass the uh, information via DT. Uh, for But for ACPI, um, uh, parsing the ACPI table so early was uh, difficult as well as uh, it was not uh, uh, 
not a, a good design to pa uh, uh, parse acpi within efi st uh, stub kind of thing so i mean modularity wise so uh, ard uh, suggested uh, to implement a new boot protocol uh, for this so currently it is it is just providing the boot heart id but in future this can be extended if uh, there is some more information which needs to be provided via this protocol so this specification is uh, maintained within the rvi and uh, uefi spec updates uh, uefi spec basically provides link to the uh, specification uh, uh, maintained in the rvi for uh, risk five platforms and uh, this uh, specification is ratified this year and the support has been added in the u boot as well as linux etk to support also is in progress uh, uh, pending for some refactoring work and uh, you can find the specification uh, in this link okay so now uh, sorry go ahead is there a question Okay, thanks. So now, uh, I'm getting an echo. Okay, uh, basically, uh, one of the challenge I mean, uh, I see is uh, uh, just last month uh, there was a version of ACPS specification released. So even though ECRs get approved, uh, it will take at least a year, I feel, uh, to for the next version to be released, or more than that. So uh, the challenge with this ACPI spec is uh, these ECRs are reviewed within the ASWG forum where not everybody can access and uh, public released uh, ACPI spec will take a year and also once this uh, ACPI spec is released uh, some of this uh, uh, MADT table uh, information etc needs to be added into a uh, ACPI CA repository uh, header files are uh, header file patches need to be updated in that and then that has to be integrated in linux i think so all this look very long journey so uh, i am uh, looking for inputs uh, how we can do something early uh, whether we can send some rfc patches because some of these uh, uh, patches in linux are try, uh, based on arm architecture a uh, lot of uh, hard work was done for arm architecture for to enable acp that's why a uh, lot of things in risk uh, to enable acp are much uh, simpler so uh, but uh, uh, whether uh, we need to do any um, the refactoring or some of those things uh, uh, i was thinking some early inputs to the rfc patches may be uh, good uh, even before acp spec get released but i'm not sure whether that is possible so you don't need to wait for the spec to clear this is not what intel does for its acpi changes it tends to get them upstream in parallel with getting them in the spec so i'd say you pick a point in your process probably either pre-ecr or just coming up to ecr start doing the patches in parallel with that so that means that by the time the spec hits the patch should already be upstream in linux yeah and like to first order that's also how we do the risk five foundation specs like the reason we do frozen and not ratified is that getting something through like the official process for any specification could be kind of an arbitrary amount of time. I don't know ACPI very well, but at a certain point, you know it's not going to change anymore. Um, and that's the point at which we can take stuff. It's frozen for risk five. I don't I don't know what all these words are for ACPI land, right? Um, but if like if other architectures have a a, a bar at which something's you know good enough in ACPI that it's ready to go, then I, I don't see any reason we need to do anything different. That makes sense. So it's and the ECI other thing I want to say is like, you can always send an RFC, like just, just send it. <laughs> like it doesn't, it doesn't need to be fully, you know, done specifications and whatnot. Like you're better off just sending it early so folks can read the code that goes along with the specs and upstream folks will read it and whatnot. Uh, that, that's the good way to do it. Uh, once ECR is approved, uh, there is no way uh, changing the spec, right? Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can consider that as a freezing point, like that as a point to be patches to be accepted. 
Well, what both ACPI and uh, UEFI are supposed to be code forward specs. So in theory, code is supposed to be available as you get the ECR approved. And what better to try RFC code for than Linux? I mean, what's what's the worst that can happen? They piss all over it, they don't like it, so you have to re repatch it. That's all that can happen in Linux. And you mostly own the architecture. So I'd start patching first in parallel with doing the ECRs. Okay, yeah, I guess my worry with that kind of stuff is just when there's an external specification process, I don't want to make a mess and then end up with something that's a de facto ABI that doesn't match the spec, you know what I mean? Right, but remember the specs are basically a reflection of what people think. If you okay. code ACPI without actually trying to implement it, you often find you've made a cock up. So coding yeah. it in parallel with the implementation helps ACPI actually be correct first time out. And that totally makes sense. Like that's like, <laughs> I think to me the question is like, when do we merge the yeah. code, not when that's do we totally break the code? Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, ask yourself what the harm is in merging the code. Even if ACPI says, actually, you've forgotten about this bit, we need to modify that, you can patch the code as part of the process of doing the modified ECR. Yeah, right? I guess. So, so you can evolve the ECR and kernel code in parallel. Yeah, I guess my worry is just like, then you have kernel code that looks at the old version of the ACPI stuff and will not function with the new version depending on how it changes. Yes, but okay. you don't mark it as people can rely on this in the kernel okay. until you know that the ECR has been approved. Okay, and, and that's still way before ACPI publishes the spec. Okay. And there's a way to do that in kernel land? I don't, I don't know ACPI that well. Well, it depends. If you're if this ACPI thing happens to be an ABI that people will rely on, then you just mark it as experimental okay. until yeah, that's... the ECR gets approved. Because usually it's just, you know, when it's upstream, it's ABI and we're Set, if yeah, and no, upstream is not as hard and fast as that. We know certain interfaces have to be evolved as they okay. as they're first created. We never get anything right first time round, for God's sake. Yeah. So it's a complete myth that what we put in first time round we have to stick to for okay, all the yeah. time. That's great. As it, long as ACPI works that way, that's fine with me. I just don't want to make a mess. Well, ACPI stuff. doesn't quite work that way. It <laughs> likes to think of itself as the oracle for everything. But this is the way evolving ACPI should work. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that's if that's the way other people are doing it. Then I'm fine with it. I just don't want to like. Because if other people are not treating it that way and we treat it that way, we get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, the only other people at Intel, they own the spec, so they're perfectly happy putting stuff sort of upstream early because they, they have pre-approval effectively to get And that was my work, right? In you need to work on a more experimental patch forward basis because yeah. you're not Intel. Yeah, that was my worry is that we're, we live in a different world. <laughs> so anyway, okay, cool, yeah. So how much time usually it takes for an ECR approval? Uh, uh, it, it depends, I think. Uh, uh, so, if it is uh, simple and uh, not conflicting, I think uh, they will approve in one meeting. Is it like a monthly meeting? It's a weekly meeting, but uh, last one month, uh, because of summer holidays, uh, people took off, so it did not happen. Uh, so, this week, probably, uh, they will review this. So, as per my understanding, there is no mailing list where it's being discussed, right? It's all in-person meetings, correct? Uh, there is a mailing list, but uh, we, uh, which is closed for uh, UEFI members, and uh, I mean it's a closed group as well as uh, there is a uh, something like Jira ticket uh, uh, tracking uh, where we uh, create these tickets and uh, submit the ECRs. Thanks. Yeah. I have an in-person question. Have you gotten good engagement from the Windows folks on what you guys are proposing? I feel like they're sort of often the other interested party uh, and probably the only other folks that would come back and be like, hold on, we don't have what we need and would and would probably ask for major changes. So uh, have you talked to them much at all and do they have any feedback on what you're doing? No, uh, we haven't talked to uh, Windows guys, uh, but uh, some of these things are very basic things what we are uh, trying to enable and uh, uh, it, it doesn't deviate from other architectures what they have done. So. Uh, uh, so, uh, so you're not I expecting think, much trouble is what you're saying yeah yeah even if they have some new improvements i think we can update uh, with uh, further ecrs okay thanks okay uh so in terms of uh, some advanced things uh, we are working on the uh, 
IOMMU, I mean, ACPA table for IOMMU support uh, uh, that is still work in progress. And uh, for power and performance management, uh, uh, we are working on the fixed feature hardware specification for RISC-V. Uh, every architecture needs to maintain this and this will be maintained and ratified within RVI. And this is required to support um, LPI, uh, low power idles, uh, and uh, CPPC um, for performance management. Uh, so we are working on this and uh, yeah, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, so these are uh, multiple groups from which we are getting a lot of inputs and uh, Currently, this all these ACPI discussions have been moved into under uh, uh, Risk Five Platform Runtime Services (TG), and uh, uh, there are a lot of people uh, within these communities who have provided the feedback and uh, 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 helped in this uh, ECRs. And uh, here is the uh, GitHub where, uh, if you have any issue, you can raise it. And question also you can raise it there and if you are a member of risk you can reach out via this mailing list with that uh, i think uh, uh, let me complete this thank you very much uh, uh, open for questions Okay. okay, it's Jessica. Um, you said you had the uh, version two of various tables um, to follow on from an initial version one that's sort of basically useless, but sort of gets the core um, of the architecture strings in. Are all those version two changes backwards compatible with version one? Yeah, it yeah. it cannot it has to be backward compatible uh, any version two. Uh, so basically, the fixed offsets in the previous uh, version of the table cannot be uh, changed. So only additions can be done. Okay, and has that caused problems for your version two, or do you anticipate that potentially causing problems? And that had you just waited to do version two as version one, you might have got a nicer table design. Or have you tried to design them so that version one is basically version two with stuff taken out? Yeah, uh, usually it will be version two, it will be the latest. Did I, uh, did I get your question? As in, no, there is a risk that if you try and do backwards compatibility, you end up with a worse API than if you do uh, a breaking change uh, because you have the constraints of not changing the layout of what's already there. Um, and so uh, there is a risk that by sort of trying to rush ahead with uh getting version one through that's not really actually ever going to be used in a real system because it doesn't have anything that a real system everything that a real system would need um there is the risk that you'll end up with version two being a worse thing than if you just skipped version one entirely and designed version two from scratch so my question is have you designed uh it, has your approach been define version one and then add on top of version one what you need for version two? Or has your approach been uh, design the whole thing from scratch and then take out the bits you don't need um, for version one? Uh, so basically uh, that that kind of thing, what we are doing is with respect to the int C table, uh, because EIA is not uh, it frozen so uh, version and version two the difference is only the uh, uh, msic base address and size which are additional inputs compared to the uh, uh, version one so there is no removal of any fields so uh, that way it is always backward compatible and uh, these versions are not new in the acpa world uh, there are many tables which have gone through the versions uh, uh, multiple versions actually and uh, we just need to maintain the compatibility in the heart capabilities table do you anticipate that yeah the... awkwardly extended or do you anticipate that being a clean extension once you resolve the various issues that you're facing at the moment 
Yeah. So heart capability stable, uh, we anticipate uh, it it will grow uh, multiple versions. But the way we have designed is uh, uh, it is uh, easy to uh, um, add or uh, uh, add the new features into this uh, without breaking the compatibility so we don't anticipate it to break the uh, uh, compatibility but it it will allow us to add more features in future so what do you do for cbo at the moment then because yeah. there needs to be so, a way to distinguish between version one cbo and version two cbo uh, if you decide that you need to encode the block size in there yeah so every every uh, every structure or sub sub substructure within the rhct has a version so uh, basically uh, for each different extension version you uh, the different subtype of the cbo will be there and uh, uh, we don't need to maintain both the versions within the rhct okay so it's not just an iso string yeah it's not just an iso string yeah and this is primarily uh, uh, influenced by the pptt table um, which follows the same uh, architecture so um, so we are following this something similar and uh, it is extendable uh, for future also okay thanks I don't know if we're going to talk about this later, but what's the status for um, AIA and for also IO MMU? Anup, you want to answer? Let, yes, let me try to answer that. So, so uh, AIA, I mean, uh, is right now in officially stable state. It means that we got approval from the Arch Review Committee, and so now we're just uh, one or two months away uh, to reaching the public review. Uh, so we hope that it will be in public review like in, in just one or two months itself. So once it is in public review, it means that it's frozen. Okay. And the rest of the ratification is just following the process and get it out released through the proper completing the process. Right. So, so uh, the same applies to IOMMU as well. Um, so we, I, that also has received an arch review approval and all those things. So it's, it's in a stable state, honestly. So, so both of these things, uh, uh, quite optimistically will be like in a frozen state by uh, December, let's say. That is, yeah, or it could be earlier as well, right? So, and like, at what point in that timeline do you think uh, Linux like patches would be like attempted to be merged? So Linux patches uh, we can send any day, but we are just holding off just to make sure that things are always frozen when patches land. But yeah, if people want, I can uh, we can send RFC patches for AI at least sooner. IMMU, it is still some work going on to complete the uh, some bits of the proof of concept, but yeah, maybe Atish knows a better state on that. But I think those can also land pretty soon uh, RFC patches. Right? So. Latest I have is that uh, IOMMU uh, will in fact uh, go to public review this month, um, and um, the uh, AIA shortly thereafter. So. Um, there's, there's not a, a big pressure. These are non ISA documents. So it's not like a huge pressure to get into a profile or something. Um, and we're going to do the right thing for, you know, RBI members and make sure that they're, they're in place, but also take a look at the size of IOMMU. It's a 90 page document. So it, I, I expect the public review is going to have some comments. AIA is a lot shorter. And um, towards the end there, um, you had the newer groups up there and I know they recently, we went through some changes in how things are organized. So the one that's handling the ACPI, is that the plat PRS? Is that the platform on runtime services? Is that the group? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And then what's, and then is SBI under the OSA SEE task group? No, so platform runtime services will drive both SBI, ACPI and UFA. So for now, there is no pending proposals in UFA land, but ACP and SBA will be discussed uh, <clears throat> actively uh, in the PRSDG. So OSSE okay. is basically like a uh, overarching spec, which will include all the interfaces and uh, some other things, including profiles. So, and then it will basically a software guide or software spec 
for distros or other folks to follow, like to make uh, it compatible across platforms. Okay, so is profiles going to come from the OSA SEE task no. group? No. <laughs> Let me, I'm Mark, by the way. I mean, Drew knows me, but uh, I'm the CTO for S5. So we just did a big reorg inside of RISC V. There's now a PRIV software committee, and, um, and they're just getting their feet on the ground and organizing things. There are some recurring specs that we're updating every year, UEFI, SBI, blah, blah, blah. And that's what PRS is about, is, is handling those, right? Um, the SEE, you got to go back to the, um, uh, to the UNPRIV spec, UNPRIV? no, to the PRIV spec, and SEE is a term, uh, supervisor uh, execution environment, and uh, there is an API between the kernel and it. Supervisor execution environment, uh, I, I, it, it, it's all the things that the kernel needs in order to run. Um, and so it includes profiles. Profiles are actually driven out of a profiles task group that's separate and is run directly by the technical steering committee and not by the privileged software committee or anything like that. So profiles are all about ISA um, and they're in public review right now for um, Rich OS. Um, but uh, the OSA uh, SEE is, is, as was said, an overview document and it has its own task group that's going ahead and, and pushing that forward. Does that answer your question, Drew? Yeah, I'm also wondering where would pl the platform specification fall? So uh, there's an action item for the new privileged software committee to actually define what's in a platform spec. Okay. Until they do that, it's nowhere. <laughs> uh, once they do that, uh, that, that the profiles and platforms because they are sort of fundamental to, to RISC-V members. Uh, they're both run directly by the technical steering committee, although they're sponsored by the ISA committees for the profiles and by the privileged software committee for platforms. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry if, if this is uh, just rattling the stuff off, uh, but but there are org charts around that, that explain all this and we can show them at, at some point or send them to some email, okay. uh, but they're, they're readily available. All right. And then the one last thing, so Atish, you're the chair of the PRS, is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. And you, you had the first meeting, was it last week? Yeah, we had the first meeting last week. That was just an intro to figure out the time slots and logistics, everything. Uh, and then we'll have the next meeting uh, next Tuesday, I believe. I'll send the emails. Okay. Thanks. And thank you, Atish, for doing that. <laughs> yeah. We have two minutes. I don't know if there's another question. Sorry, it's We are finishing our talks before time this year. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, I think it's only two minutes from my end. I think like we're only ending two minutes early, which I think is pretty reasonable. It takes about that much time to get folks moving around anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Need that long to figure out how to click on all no, this stuff. Like all of the previous years, we always used to run over the time slot. So. <laughs>